I'm Eric Kilpatrick, I'm a consultant in chemical pathology at Hull Royal Infirmary and I'm an honorary professor in clinical biochemistry at Hull York Medical School. And we were fortunate enough to be successful in getting a small grant to look at the effect of it, the extensive flooding there was in Hull in June of 2007 and how that affected patients with diabetes. In June 2007, Hull, along with many other cities, experienced extensive flooding and about 20,000 people in Hull were affected by the flooding at that time and we knew amongst those that there would likely be many hundreds who also had diabetes and we wanted to see whether uh, the patients with diabetes coped after the flooding because many of them as you probably know wet, had to live in caravans for up to a year many of them had to move into hotels or move in with, with other relatives for months on end, on average I think it was between a year and a year and a half. Many of them were having to live on microwave foods, uh, they weren't able to cook properly. The last thing in their minds was diabetes and we wanted to compare the people who had been flooded with those in Hull who hadn't. Well, it wasn't myself that did all the work. Um, in fact, most of the work was done by Ben Ung, who is a registrar with us. Uh, and he sent out questionnaires, about 15,000 questionnaires to people that we knew had diabetes uh, but we didn't know if they'd been affected or not by the flooding. So we did get a flood ourselves, it was a flood of questionnaires coming back and actually there were about 2,000 people responded of whom um, about 300 had been affected by the flooding. The sugar control of people who had been flooded actually deteriorated after the flooding um, but their sugar control worsened for a period of three to six months and then got better again so it was back to where it was before the flooding after about a year and um, so they actually they coped very well indeed but what we did find it was actually people who were treated with insulin who seemed to be affected worse than people who were treated by diet or with tablets so I think the message for us really was if there's a future flooding disaster and we're told those events are likely to become more common, if there's a future flooding disaster maybe we want to be targeting patients we know who are insulin treated and following a flood and give them intensive uh, treatment in order to avoid the sugar deteriorating after the event. You can even have thought about uh, conducting this study without the funding uh, provided by donators to Diabetes UK.